This is my newest modification we're gonna do for the old Ninja 400 here, Nina. Uh, this is gonna allow me to shift without having to use the clutch lever. So that is making the shift a lot faster and that can you know, definitely shave some time on the track and just makes the bike a whole lot more fun as you uh, kind of shift through the gears. As you're uh, taking off, you don't have to you know, slow down a little bit as you're rolling off the throttle on that clutch. You just kind of hold it down and you just shift up. The way that it works is that it uses that you know big sensor you can see on there and that actually will attach uh, right here. And when you push on the lever, um, it feels the tension there and it can tell that you're, pu you're putting some pressure on it and it basically will allow the kill switch over here um, for the engine so that way you can shift gears seamlessly without actually having to um, pull in the clutch basically. So yeah, it's pretty nice to allow you to do that. Uh, with this setup, it's pretty cool because they actually have an app so you can change some of the features on there without having to go back into the bike. Uh, basically for the most part, once you put it all together, you don't have to take anything apart. So that's pretty good. You can do everything just from the app um, itself to change some of the settings that they allow you to change. It's not as, uh, settings heavy as some other quick shifters which i kind of like since you know you don't have to get too crazy about it um just depends on what you're looking for so this you know it's a little bit more basic um but definitely allows you to do all the things that you need to do with the with the quick shift and it works really well uh one of the reasons i got it is that i actually have that on my old cvr here 1000 double r uh so you can see it right there that's the the sensor attached there um this one has a different shift linkage you can see it's vertical uh whereas on the ninja it's, it's horizontal so i didn't see any videos you know going over the anatory and you know explaining how to install it to the bike it's not too hard considering it's a two-cylinder but you know it definitely doesn't hurt to have a video just to kind of reference to so i figured i'll put something up and show you guys you know what i which uh what needs to be done to to get this project set up and to get this installed in your bike so um i'll open it up here so that you can see all the stuff that's inside the box uh, so here you got your unit controller, so you can see Anatory Racing looks really nice, and it's in, in gold here. Um, this is basically what you throw into your passenger seat, and it's got the two connectors, or three connectors, one for the power, uh, one for your engine kill switch, and then one for the actual sensor itself. So those are what you're going to use to connect. Um, here, here is our engine uh, wire loom. Um, so this is actually what you're going to connect in line with your engine, so basically you unplug the this one is for the coilover so you can see it says cl there um so you're going to unplug the coils and then you're going to plug this in and uh it's just going to go in line basically this also you can see the uh grub screws and lock nuts in there so that's going to be used when you put that sensor on just to make sure you got everything uh, aligned properly and i'll go over that you know once we get to that point um, here, this is the actual sensor, so you can see as I got it in blue, um, this come with a few other colors. I really liked green as my kind of accent color on the bike, but they didn't have green, um, so I went with blue, and, uh, you know, looks like it will match pretty well um, just with the bike itself, and then, yeah, just some stickers here. So, yeah, let's go ahead and get started, and we'll go over what we need to do to uh, install this on Nina here. So as with most things on the Ninja, first thing you gotta do is just take off your passenger seat and that's gonna be just from the key down here. Uh, I'm my own cameraman, so I already kinda did that myself. And then you gotta pull on this right here in order to unhook your seat. Um, just to get that stuff off. Mine's a little more crowded here just because I have all this wiring for the under lighting. Um, but this is basically how it's gonna look once you remove all that. You can actually remove this cover right here um, just with this you got some pins locking it in basically so you can pull that out and it'll give you a little more space now we're gonna jump over to the front here and take care of um, these bolts right here and these are most of the bikes gonna be a four so these are four on those on that's on both sides you want to be careful when you're taking apart the bike just because most of the bolts have these little plastic washers on there and those are very easy to lose so just pay attention to that as you're working through things once you take off the two bolts, this basically is just got some rubber grommets in there. So you just got to kind of yank it out. Um, and you can see it's got the attachment points there. And they just go into these little fitting points there. And then kind of a quick way to remove the tank is that instead of tackling the tank itself, you can actually use the number five to remove these four bolts in this bracket there. And that will allow you to just take out the whole area and that clears up a little bit more space that way. So next we're going to take off the tank and it's got a couple allens right here. Um, so go ahead and take those off. And then when you got that removed, you got on the tank itself just a couple of hoses um, that you'll have to remove this one uh, right here. And there's one right over there that you just have to uh, 
can release the clamp and then just pull out the hose. On this side, you got the fuel line and it's got kind of an interesting clip on here that you just gotta have to pop off. And you wanna be careful because these are pretty gentle. So you basically just lift up the tabs on the edge and then you slide it off towards the front of the bike basically. Usually when you disconnect this, it might spill a little gas, so it um, doesn't hurt to have a little rag on hand just to pick up anything that might spill. And then you just slowly just pull that out. Yeah, it's not too bad. Um, there's one more connector kind of buried in there um, for the gas tank, but you'll kind of see it is going to be kind of hooked up to this. Um, so you can see that one right there. Can't really focus on it too well. Um, but yeah, right there, back in the back there, that's another one you'll have to remove for the gas tank. Once you remove that, you'll be good to go. To remove the air box, you got a number 10 socket right here. You got a sensor right in the back here you gotta remove. So you pull that out. And then underneath here, it's gonna be kind of tricky to see, but you see there's a, where the throttle body's attached, and then that's the, socket you gotta or the, the bolt you gotta loosen and also that um, air box hoses in the front there you gotta loosen those up and remove those too so i already removed the hose in the back but that one's a little trickier to get to and once you do that you're basically able to take off um, the air box here so um, yeah you always want to make sure that nothing gets into your engine because somebody opens that up direct access so it's always a good idea to um, put something in there just like uh, like a paper towel just to make sure that you know nothing gets in there we're not going to be in here for too long but just in case and just for your purposes I'm just going to show you you know what you would do like say if you're going to take a break at this point um, yeah you just basically cover these up and then you can do whatever you need to and then obviously make sure you take them out uh, when you get back to the bike and finish up what you're doing so this is what it basically will look like once you get it finished and set up here on the engine loom. So you can see it's just basically plugged in line and the OEM connectors are really good. Um, and the anatory connectors are also really good, obviously. So they connect with the positive clicks and make sure that um, you hear that so that you're sure that everything is plugged in properly. So basically you're gonna have two connections that turn into four connections that plug the anatory in line. And then you just wanna make sure that you route the wires to the side and in a way that you know, you're not gonna have any tension on the wires because that's really important. Um, especially with these connectors, otherwise they can cause some problems. And especially the way you zip tie them is also really important uh, that you're not putting any tension on the wires that can cause any problems in the future. And once you get that all plugged in, you can basically put your airbags back on. This back hose is a pain. Uh, a lot of people in the videos are saying it was hard to get off. It was super easy for me to get off, but super hard. It took a long time for me to put it back on. So just be aware they don't give a lot of extra hose there and you really got to take your time, get that in there and get the the pin locked on there pretty good um the rest here yeah it's pretty easy just kind of to do the reverse of what i showed you earlier and then you got your wire kind of come running coming around the side here and then i actually have it hooked up um i just end up taking out the little clevis pins that were on um the little bracket here and then you can take those that little cover out pretty easily so uh here you can see the inventory racing uh connector or the main unit right in here and i'm gonna try to have to figure out a better spot for it um there isn't really a great place to fit it um so we'll have to see but for right now you know it's gonna go basically in this area the wire for this i end up slipping through there's like a little hole on the side here and actually took it from the right side here and then brought it over to the left side right under here um, and there's some space here you can kind of slide it through pretty easily um, so that's what I have for now um, I have my underglow here all zip tied up um, and I might not even actually zip tie this I might just kind of store this under here because it looks like it should secure it pretty well um, from the other wires that are there uh, so that should keep that in line and without any tension on the wire so that way you know this one isn't as pertinent since you know this shouldn't move as much um, but you want to make sure you're not routing it by any heat or anything uh, that will end up damaging the wire so you just want to be careful about that next we're going to go ahead and put back on the gas tank get that all squared away in the front here and then we can start working on the uh, the strain gauge and the sensor um, down at the bottom there <clears throat> I kind of skipped ahead a little bit uh, like I said I'm my own cameraman so I had to do a little figuring out for this part um, so at this point we're overworking on the shift linkage here, and you're actually gonna start out with this OEM bar here in the middle, 
and it actually is going to have two nuts on it, one on this end, one on the other end, and that's going to connect it to the heim joints. This is one heim joint, and this is the other heim joint on that side. So all you got to do is loosen those nuts and basically bring them to this side in the middle, and then you'll be able to spin this out um, and just remove this basically. Once you do that, you'll find in your packaging uh, that the and the Tori comes with some grub screws, and they come with two longer ones, kind of like this. This is the bottom, and you can see, or let's focus on this a little better. So that's the bottom there, so it's got nothing. And then the top, you actually have um, a location for like a flathead screw, basically. So you got two of these. You got two long ones and one short one. So that's where I was having a little bit of trouble uh, figuring out what went where. Um, but it was also kind of silly just because the bike is made in a certain way so that the reverse screw um, goes into there with the reverse bolt. And then the regular one goes on this side. So the shorter one, basically, when you get it, is going to be on this side. And the longer one is on that side. You basically are going to tighten it in. Um, I put two bolts in here, or two nuts rather, um, just is going to keep it tight on this side, and this one will keep the sensor from moving too much. Um, and then I did the same thing on the other side, so I got two bolts. Uh, so now we're just going to go ahead and, you know, screw that in. And one of the main things you want to make sure is at the end, you got to make sure that the anatory, if your system, you know, if you're a ninja like mine, um, it's got a horizontal linkage. Um, so you got to make sure that it's facing, the wire is facing upward like that. Um, you don't want it to the side or down and you want to make sure you got lots of slack. So we'll get to that in a second. Um, if you got a vertical linkage, uh, we'll go over to my CBR here. It's got a vertical linkage, um, so you see it straight up and down instead of side to side. Um, it's going to have the wire facing the back and, you know, lots, lots of slack there. So, um, you know, when you're shifting, um, you got it's not going to be tugging on anything on the wires there at all. Alrighty, so once you got it all squared away, this is what it's going to look like. Uh, so you got your bolt here. That's what you're going to put first. This is the small one. Uh, you got your anatory sensor right in the middle here. You're going to screw that on next, and then you're going to put your other bolt on which is the longer one on the back end of this. And then you're gonna use a couple nuts to kind of tighten those into place, just to kind of keep this handle all secure. You're gonna have one last nut on this bolt, but you're gonna keep that loose. And then what you do is you actually take off the, um, the clutch lever here, and then this is a number six. Once you take that off, you're able to just spin the whole lever, and that allows you to tighten this up, so that way you can get the, the right uh, angle for this. You want this as close to 90 degrees as possible um, so that way you got that nice controlled uh, motion there uh, with with the uh, quick shifter. So so for the routing of the wire I didn't actually do too much. I left it kind of loose here because you don't want to have any tension. I just routed it uh, through the back of this fairing here and then through the back here and then up to the top. I'm looks like I'm not going to end up needing to use any real zip ties uh, maybe just for the uh, electrical, but for the rest of the bike, we seem to be doing pretty good. Um, and this extra slack here, I'm just going to keep it tucked under here, um, just so we're definitely not putting any tension. Um, one of the nice things, I got this bike used, and I would kind of recommend this for other people, or you can get your own setup, but you don't want to directly connect the main unit to the, the bike battery. Um, that's basically how they give you, um, when it comes, it's just like little, little uh, connectors for the battery. But you don't really want to do that unless you know you're never gonna put it on a battery tender or anything like that, just because that can definitely ruin the unit um, and that will not be covered under warranty. So if you can connect it either some way in line to the, the um, electrical here so that it's not directly to the battery, or um, what I kind of got lucky and found is that my bike was pretty much new and had like 175 miles, but somebody added a few different things on here. So I actually had um, a battery tender connector here and so this is the end of the connector and this side is connected to the battery um, and it even has a fuse which is really nice so um, that'll you know protect um, from any surges or anything like that so this is something that you guys can take a look at maybe as an option for you um, just a connector like that and then on the other side you got the other end of the connector and then i'm not even going to show you my electrical right now it's kind of a hack job but i'm going to be fixing it you know in the next few days so i want to actually get the parts to connect everything well but um but yeah that's a good idea so that way you know if you do put on the tender all you got to do is disconnect the uh the quick shifter and then you got a connection here for the battery tender itself so that also works in a way so yeah once we get that set up we'll be able to turn on the bike you don't want to start the bike until everything is connected um, otherwise it'll kind of screw up the system so um then you have to kind of reset everything so this is uh now yeah we'll have everything connected pretty much i'm going to put it all together and then we can see what we got to do next uh, once we get started
So this is what's gonna look like when you're at the end. You're gonna have this quick shifter linkage with the wire sticking out here. Um, my front sprocket is here, so I couldn't really hide it anywhere, but not too big of a deal. It's not very noticeable. And I have it connected all the way up into the main unit in the back. I have my engine loom connected as well. So you can go ahead from there and start the bike since we have it all connected up. And then you just want to go ahead and start up your app, um, which is the QS Pro app here. So we're gonna do that. Once you have the app open, you're gonna hit scan. And that's going to show you this option where it says shifters in range, QS Pro 2. You go ahead and click that. And from there it says connected, please read button. So press read button. So you're gonna hit press and the read button and it's gonna say ready at that point. And it's gonna give you a few options here. So on mine, I have the push turned off and the pull turned on. And that's because if you look at my shift linkage here, when I upshift, uh, it's pulling on the sensor. So that's the one that we're gonna set up and this is for standard shift. So um, that's the one that we have turned on and the push is turned off. You can actually adjust the settings as well. You just wanna click, um, and you can change sensitivity and you can change a few other things. But once you do that, um, you wanna hit upload, otherwise it won't actually be sent to the unit. So um, remember to keep that in mind. If for some reason you're not gonna end up using the quick shifter or you have an issue, um, they do send this plug as well. So you basically just connect this to the harness and um, this will basically turn off the quick shifting uh, of the unit and allow it to be run just normally basically. So, so yeah, so that's basically it all set up and um, we're gonna have to take it for a spin.